Welcome to Planet Vehicle, an automotive reality show. Planet Vehicle helps the viewer experience the world of automobiles. We review new cars and take you on test drives. We talk with the heads of the automotive industry to find out what products their companies are bringing to the showroom. Transportation is a large part of lifestyle. We bring you athletes, business leaders, and celebrities at events where cars, SUVs, and motorcycles are featured and highlighted. Classic cars, new cars, or futuristic cars, Planet Vehicle puts them in the spotlight. Planet Vehicle introduces you to car clubs, takes you to auto shows, and reports from the racetrack. In addition to our television program, Planet Vehicle's website keeps you updated on the latest news and trends, while our viewer appreciation events provide the opportunity to mingle, network, and experience new and exciting models straight off the assembly line. An automobile is a huge purchase. Planet Vehicle shows you how to take great care of your investment, whether it's safety, maintenance, or ideas to customize your vehicle. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. It's the LA Auto Show, folks. We're here at the Mercedes-Benz Pavilion. Jeff Day, Director of Communications for Mercedes-Benz USA. Jeff, what an exciting press conference. I mean, a gull-winged AMG Black Series beauty. Tell us a little bit about what you launched today and what kind of impact you hope these models will have on the market. Sure, well, LA is a very important show for us. Um, uh, about 30% of the AMG cars we sell in the States are all sold here in Southern California. So in terms of a consumer show, it's huge because a lot of our customers are here. Uh, but in terms of a press show, it's pretty big too. So this is why we brought this SLS AMG Black Series. It was the world premiere of this car, and we did it here in LA. Um, it's a rare beast. There won't be many of them, and they won't be sold in many dealerships either. Uh, but it is really probably what happens when we let our engineers just go crazy. So uh, it's got a zero to 60 in under three and a half seconds. It's 622 brake horsepower. Uh, we took about 200 pounds of weight out of it. So the power weight ratio uh, is one of the best we have of any of our cars. And when we do Black Series cars, they are really for the purists. So, I mean, AMG is our passionate performance brand, but Black Series is just really for the purest of the pure in terms of like those guys that just want to, or girls, that just want to like get in the car and really have a very visceral experience of man machine together. Now, how many women typically do you or comprise the demographic for Black Series automobiles? Yeah, uh, Black Series probably is skews very heavily men. Of course, uh, what you'll find with a lot of these cars is that people will buy them and they'll put them in their collection and they'll maybe use them once a year when they take it out to the track. Um, uh, the overall AMG demographic for women is actually surprisingly large, especially if you look at something like SL63 AMG. Um, and the one thing that we do understand is, even if it's not the woman's name on the pink slip, she's made the decision to buy that car. So there, there's a very important demographic for us. Okay, in addition, GL63 AMG, you take grand luxury in the form of the GL, you put a monster 6.3 liter AMG V8 in it, and you have the GL63 AMG. Let's talk a little bit about that. The ultimate soccer mom car right yeah. there. Uh, that's uh, that's a people mover that moves those people pretty quickly around. Uh, so that is that is the fastest 7 seat SUV on the market today. Uh, just a little over, uh, just a little bit over four and a half seconds from zero to 60. Um, but all of the great things that people love about the, the GL, um, in terms of its space, in terms of its comfort, in terms of its design and its drivability. Uh, you can take all of that stuff and now you just add a killer engine in it uh, so you can have a little bit of fun too. So it's not only the kids in the back watching the screens are smiling, uh, mum or dad driving is smiling too. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. Hey, it's Alfred Jones for Planet Vehicle. We are here live at the LA Auto Show, and right here is a hot, hot car. Now, everybody has already liked the Veloster. The first year sold more than anybody ever thought it would. Then the Turbo came out. Now you have the C3. Check this out. It is a convertible that you can put your bike in, you can put the top down. Look at this. It slides forward, and as you can see, just Melvin, Melvin's my videographer. Just turn around, look at all the people that are getting f shots of this C3 Veloster. It's just totally amazing. Here at the LA Auto Show, you know, there's always some great hot things going on. And 
I want to show you the people who make it happen. This is Christopher Chapman. Chris is one of the designers. You're one of the head designers, as a matter of fact, with Hyundai. Chief designer at the Satellite Studio here in California. He's the chief designer. Now, you, you want to explain to everybody what this is? And as your parents would say, will you just tell everybody what you've done? What have we done? What have we created, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the Veloster has been a really successful product for us uh, for so long, actually, now, uh, since its inception. And so we thought that uh, uh, the car lends itself really well to a lot of different personalities. So it can be Jekyll, it can be Hyde, it can be a lot of different things. And so we decided to express it in a kind of a global way with uh, uh, a sort of uh, Jack of all trades type of car, really. So we basically took the stock Veloster Turbo and we opened up the roof and we dropped the tailgate of the car to open it up to all kinds of different possibilities. So essentially, we've got a car that uh, we've illustrated here with the biking world that can be sort of understood and related to uh, worldwide. Um, and then we have a, a few little touches here of our Southern California culture as well as to sort of uh, uh, highlight some of the things that we kind of are interested over here in. in. Right. Now, <laughs> last year when the uh, Veloster first came out, when I had it for the press fleet, people were like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, I can't wait to this. Is this a concept or is it going to be out? We're going to gauge public interest, honestly, and see whether or not uh, it's popular enough for, for, for us to develop. Uh, tweet Chris Chapman said we want to see three. Yeah. yeah, just tweet him. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, this is a pretty serious uh, idea here. It really lends itself wonderfully to the to the to the concept because it won't need this cross member uh, structure uh, across the car as most of the roll tops or these sport tops that you've seen in the past. The roof line comes down rather low in this area, so in the C pillar area here, structurally from a car design and development standpoint, we can we can uh, you know uh, make it more rigid and so forth, so that the rollover and some of the other safety aspects can be um, uh, addressed. So it, basically, we have something that. Uh, you know, can open up from the rear or you can open it up from the front and, and it comes back all the way to the center center line of the rear occupant back there. So it's really, really versatile. So we've illustrated again with some, some lifestyle things, some sport things, but you can imagine the early sort of college graduate owning such a car where they, where they want a little bit more versatile. They, they don't want to quite go into the SUV market but they want something that they can carry, maybe some home improvement things back from the from the from the Home Depot or the Lowe's or whatever like that. So it's 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 across the board a wonderful expression of a personality. Now you know I was listening to the safety aspect and all of that, but folks at home they're just going blah yeah, blah. Yeah. I want it. You want it. <laughs> blah blah. C3. I hope so. Yeah, we're really pleased with the way it came out and and. Uh, we're hoping that we can we can get a lot of excitement around the car. Again, you know, the, the car, the, the, the young people, they really love the car. It's got a lot of robust character and a lot of personality. And I mean, we, we've done a we've done a car for a race version of it. We've got this sport top and I, I, I don't put it past us to come up with a couple other concepts for the car as well, because it's just a it's just a wonderful, wonderful base to work from. You know, Chris is being modest because if, if, if you get a chance to see, there are not a lot of young people here and everybody's gathering around. There's a young lady who's with a blog, I think it's called Davis Blog. She was here and she was just, if, if she did everything but asked if the car was single. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, let's get her name and number and you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> So who do we need to talk to? Do we need to talk to Chris? Do we need to talk to, to John Kravchak? Who do we need to talk to to make sure this C3 you know, comes to fruition? You know, John made a good point of it. We're, we're, we're heavily involved with the Twitter world, so that's probably the easiest way to kind of go out there and say we want the car, and, and it's probably the easiest for our customers to kind of uh, send the message. Okay. So is there a hashtag like, is it Velasta C3? C3, right. We call it convertible three door. So it's got the single door on the one side and the door. Okay, door. so is it, a, is it Velasta C3 or just C3, the hashtag? It's a C3 roll top. Okay. Send a tweet, C3 roll top. You can make this happen. Yes, we can do this. Look, look, we just finished with an election. Now, keep the advocacy going. That's just the start. It's what you do with it. You know what I mean? Positive. So now we got Mr. <laughs> Brian over there, too. All right. Come on, come on over. He's got to go somewhere. We want to see three. <laughs> Good. But see, everybody is, 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 everybody here is in high demand at Hyundai because you guys have just been the bill of the ball today. Well, you know, we, we, we want to tap into our customers' youthful spirit, to be honest. You know, we, we, want, we want to make a kind of peace of mind for them and, and give them something to be happy about, you know. There's a lot of pressures out there, and I think it's a car designer's dream to do, to do products that make you feel young. Every 36 minutes, a child in the U.S. is diagnosed with cancer. It's terrible. And every two hours, we lose a child to cancer. Um, it's what binds us together. 
So 14 years ago, we got together, Hyundai, with our dealers to try and make a difference and, and put an end to this terrible disease. That's what Hyundai Hope on Wheels is all about. Ours is a company that's committed to solving difficult problems and to making society a better place. And there's no higher responsibility for society than, of course, caring for the next generation, caring for our children. And three years ago, we really cranked up our efforts and put something together right here in our nation's capital, where we would announce our plans to fund additional research grants and to build more public awareness about the disease. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that today, with the hard work and our amazing Hyundai dealer network, about 820 dealers strong, we have, right now, 250 separate research projects underway in this country. Isn't that amazing? There are two really, really special people here. Our national ambassador for Hyundai Hope on Wheels, CJ George, is here. Let's really get to Brianna Comerford, who's done this job before for us. Brianna, could you stand? Thank you. I'm Brianna Comerford, and I'm the former National Youth Ambassador for Hyundai's Hope on Wheels. And I'm here today for a special report for Planet Vehicle. We have CJ George with us. He's now the new National Youth Ambassador, and he'd like to tell you his story. Well, um, I had cancer when I was nine years old, and after getting through treatment, I was recommended to apply for the Hope on Wheels uh, National Youth Ambassador spot. And after applying, I got accepted, so I'm now the National Youth Ambassador and I get to speak and have a lot of fun. Now he's taking over my position. So something that me and CJ have in common is that we both had a similar type of cancer. When I was only nine years old in 2007, I was diagnosed with a type of cancer called stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I went through about a year of treatment, but now five years later, I'm a four year cancer survivor and I'm just happy to be healthy again. Um, so are you really just excited to travel and just help other kids with cancer? Yeah, I'm really excited. There's definitely some cool places lined up and I can't wait to help some other kids out. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. Hi, I'm Brian Armstead with Planet Vehicle. Oftentimes, car manufacturers are just thought of of people who make cars. But a lot of social responsibility goes with the car manufacturers as well. We're here at the museum in Washington, D.C. with Dan Ackerson. He's the CEO of General Motors here in the United States. We're here to talk about a project that they're doing with wounded veterans. It's the Achilles Freedom Team of Wounded Warriors Project. Dan, welcome to Planet Vehicle. Tell us a little bit about the project and about this exciting prototype hand cycle that you've uh, shown here today. We've always been interested in veteran projects and we do that because in large measure we have 5,000 veterans in the company today and another 45,000 among our retiree base and in doing so I think it's a service to our nation um, these uh, hand cranked bicycles have in the past been notoriously renowned for breaking down they've been uncomfortable for our disabled veterans and uh, in conjunction with Michigan Tech uh, General Motors has struck this uh, cooperative effort to build more reliable, more comfortable, uh, more long-lasting um, uh, bicycles. Why? Uh, as these veterans come back and they're injured, um, it gives them a sense of purpose and it, they're generally competitive personalities. There have been 1,500 veterans that have been engaged in this project over the last couple of years and the technology that underpins these bicycles is critical to their success, their enjoyment, and uh, it's a way of saying thank you for their service to our nation. Why this particular project? This one in particular kind of warms the cockles of our hearts. It's our veterans. These right. fine young men and women are coming back, have life-altering injuries, wounds, and um, I think if you go back five, 15 years, um, some of them, their physical uh, fitness was undermined and this gave them a way to re-engage physically so it's a way of paying back for their sacrifice to our nation and uh, I think General Motors is part of the American spirit part of the American tapestry and uh, as are these veterans so it's uh, our way of saying thank you and a little bit of payback 
This is a prototype, the one we demonstrated today. They're complicated. They don't look complicated, terribly complicated, but they are. And uh, we've committed to build another 10 for the team that they'll be able to use 2013. And we did this last year when we first rolled it out last year and um, made the gift of uh, a couple, a dozen or so, and we'll do it again this year. Congratulations to General Motors for participating in this project. It's a good way to say thanks to our veterans. Hey, once again, it's Alvin Jones for Planet Vehicle. Today, we are on the campus of Bowie State University, home of the Bulldogs. Bowie State University is one of the historically black colleges playing in the CIAA when it comes to athletics. Today, we're here with Toyota, with the Toyota Green Initiative, as they help Bowie University and other historically black colleges stay green. We're going to go down to the greenhouse where some great things are going on with Bowie State University and Toyota. Three years ago, Toyota started here and we launched this green initiative, which you can see the greenhouse there, which we made a donation. At that time, they were only recycling paper. And, you know, our efforts at the time was to promote an eco-friendly environment in HBCUs. As being an alumnus of the HBCU, I'm very proud of Toyota's effort to support such initiatives. Since that time, we've expanded it to 27 HBCUs. Well, since the launching of this greenhouse, Boy has expanded it to do cardboard, plastic, and further paper. Toyota's efforts through the TGI initiative, or Toyota Green Initiative, was to expand its experience among college campuses, HBCUs. We're now up to 27. I'm proud of Toyota's efforts in doing this. Today, we had the official ribbon cutting, and today we've also continue with further education on the Green Initiative, and it's our efforts to move further to all the HBCUs. Hello, Plan and View. Uh, my name is Aaron Honeycutt. I'm the Landscape Technician Supervisor here at Bowie State University. I've been here for probably 14 to 15 years. Um, the project that we're doing today is we are dividing perennials in the greenhouse that uh, Toyota had donated. So what we're doing, um, we take the perennials and we divide them and we basically take one plant and turn it into four to five different plants. Once the spring turns around March, when they, the new foliage starts to pop out, we're going to have a beautiful daylily garden at the edge of the pond, along with some other perennials. We'll have some daylilies. These are Stelladora daylilies. We're going to have some Asian daylilies, probably some tiger lilies, uh, some bearded irises, and then some purple cone flowers. So you'll have a wide array of colors and interest. Welcome Planet Vehicle. My name is Carl Brockenbrow, Vice President for Administration and Finance here at Bowie State University. I am also Chair of the University Sustainability Committee, the Climate Commitment Coordinating Committee, or as we call it, C4. What you see behind me is part of our Toyota initiative where we have students replanting uh, plants, some daylilies, as part of our Toyota Green initiative. As part of our sustainability initiatives, we have partnered with Toyota for the past several years, and quite frankly, they've donated uh, funding to help us put up this greenhouse here to be used by students, faculty, and staff to further our green initiatives. We also have, uh, have had several recycling activities here at the campus, as well as several activities uh, dedicated to the faculty, student, and staff uh, in terms of we have a partial green roof here, we replaced our football field with artificial turf, and we've done several other things that further our sustainability efforts. We want to thank Toyota for partnering with us over the past several years and wish uh, them well in partnering with other HBCUs in their sponsorship of the CIAA. One more thing before I turn it back to you, Alvin. Go Bulldogs! Thanks, Dr. Brackenborough, for all that information about what Toyota and Bowie are accomplishing together. And of course, Toyota is working with historically black colleges. From the campus of Bowie State University, I'm Alvin Jones for Planet Vehicle. And in the words of Dr. Brackenborough, go Bulldogs! Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. 
Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. Once again, for Planet Vehicle, I'm Alvin Jones. We are live in the LA Convention Center for the LA Auto Show. You're probably wondering why am I wearing these sunglasses. It's not that I wear my sunglasses this night. It's that everything is so cool when you have them. These are polarized lens, and I can look up and I can see where it says, that's the power of German engineering. But if I take them off, I don't see anything, just like you. It still says that's the power of German engineering. Now. Melvin has one of the polarizing filters for the camera. Pull it on up, Melvin. And as you can see, there you go. Shots of the Volkswagen convertible. There's the video. And now bring it back down. You'll see that. Yep. Now you see it. Now you don't. Bring it back up again. Boom. There you go. You can see it. Now, here's something that's cool. Brian Armstead is coming up. He's going to be talking to one of the uh, folks at the great company of Volkswagen, and they're going to talk about this new Turbo Beetle convertible. That's coming up, but if you turn, you won't see it. Now you see it. Now you don't. You're watching Planet Vehicle. The LA Auto Show, this time Volkswagen. A lot of great products this year, including the iconic Volkswagen Beetle convertible. Folks, I had a 1974 Beetle convertible. I love the car. It's good to be here in LA and seeing how the car has evolved for the 2013 model year. To tell us more about it, we're speaking with Reiner Michelle. Reiner is the Vice President for Product Planning for Volkswagen. Reiner, awesome automobile. Great to be here. Tell us a little bit about this iconic brand yeah, the point is already with the coupe, but also, of course, the convertible. Um, Volkswagen's uh, heritage is coming from there. So, you know, that's why, by, by purpose, this generation coupe and convertible harks back to the original iconic design of the Beetle. The people know here in the States, 50s, 60s, 70s uh, of uh, last century. And actually, you know, uh, we have even uh, special models created for this lounge. Uh, and we are behind you see the 60s which is a little bit, you know, in this blue denim color, a fully loaded turbo, super sporty uh, version, and it goes a little bit back to this time. Jeans got popular, you know, also around the globe, and uh, really uh, harking back to this great tradition that cars had in this country. Now we have the 80s version, the 60s version, 40s? 50s, 60s, 70s, okay. <laughs> Us. I don't know, the camera might see it. Uh, it's a black one, you know, the, the Beetle is known as a black, glossy car, and right. uh, you know, the, the 50s is really a nice one. It's uh, it's black, it got uh, chrome outside mirrors, it's got beige leather seats, you know, this old style black exterior combined with beige leather. That's what we uh, wanted to do to really, you know, emphasize where we come from. And actually, you know, the design of the car goes back styling-wise, like the coupe, longer running hood, uh, the A-pillar foot was put back, we uh, stiffened, the, uh, we, we brought the uh, windshield up and also a very long running roof uh, which is really uh, supporting this body character and in order to really move it to a sport car, also a sport convertible, we gave it white stands, big wheels, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, the wheel diameter, the wheel uh, to body relationship is really super sporty, white stands, uh, so we are pretty happy, the car sits very low on the, on the road, like a sports car and uh, we are pretty happy and uh, the coupe Already in its first year sold now, year to date, after we started uh, uh, this year, already 20, more than 25,000 units in the United States. And we are very, very optimistic and very happy that we now, already a year later, could bring the convertible. How many of these do you expect to sell every year? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, we, we think about that this, this body style uh, will uh, get us um, uh, incremental about 20 to 30 percent more customers. And uh, at the end, the ratio between coupes and cabrio will be a little bit like 60-40. So, you know, um, it, it goes to uh, 25,000 units a year um, in, in this range. Um, it's a very strong uh, car, I think, from a convertible point of view, because there is so good heritage, not just with the coupe, but also with the convertible. And when we revealed last year in New York the, the coupe, there were several people coming, please bring the convertible soon and not five years later. And we said we bring it a year later, and that's what we uh, stick to that promise. You know, not like in the second generation, group, which took us five years. Now, you know, exactly one year later, we are back here and uh, introduced the car, and it's right now running to the, rolling out to the dealers. I had an opportunity to drive the Volkswagen convertible on the roads on Pacific Coast Highway here in Los Angeles, California. I drove the 2.5 liter base model, 
I drove the two liter clean diesel, turbo diesel model, and I drove the two liter turbocharged model. And I gotta tell you, the turbo and the clean diesel, these are really impressive. Not that the 2.5 isn't good, but the, um, the, the diesel is really impressive and the turbo is impressive as well. I think, you know, it's a unique uh, positioning here. We are the only company with a diesel in a convertible and it plays very well that you get all the fun, all the emotions, but still, you know, high fuel economy. We have a 41 uh, 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 miles per gallon highway with a manual transmission and also from the sportiness with the torque available on that great diesel engine, um, you know, with a manual shifter especially. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of, as a European, of course. Um, and, and then also top of the line, the two liter, known from the GTI, really a hot car, um, a 200 horse and, and um, 207 uh, foot pounds. But I think overall, what we are very happy with, and um, you guys from the media also confirmed, uh, it's really a, um, a convertible without compromise.